I'm Peter 1. I'll be Peter 2. Peter 3? Peter 4? I don't think there's a Peter 4. No, no, no. I'm looking for Peter 4. What are you doing here? I figure you'd be hanging out with the other Peters. Other, other Peters? Peters? He's a friend from work. Come on, Peter. You've got better things to do. Dad? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Pulse exclusive Spider-Man No Way Home Spider-Man 3 pack. Yes, I ended up keeping my pre-order. I was flip-flopping there for a while, looking at the price, and did I need these Spider-Mans? The movie was a year and a half ago. <laughs> What's right around the bend? What's coming? But <sighs> I needed an Andrew Garfield and a Tobey Maguire is what it came down to. And warning up front, I did not get any of the SH Figure Arts versions of these figures. I just haven't been buying a lot of Marvel from Bandai. Most of my collection is Marvel Legends. These will fit in with those. And again, looking at the money situation, one and a half, one and a quarter SH Figure Arts paid for this three pack. And I understand the imports have a lot more accessories. Well, they were going to give us the Andrew Garfield heads with that Spider-Man and then took them away. Not that this pack gives us the heads. This is what I got. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Looking at the package, we have digital renders of all three Spider-Mans here on the front. You got your Marvel Legends logo. You got your Marvel Studios logo. There's your Spider-Man logo. Fantasy scene. Hmm. Warning, choking hazard, small parts. Do not put the plastic in your mouth. On the side, there's three Spider-Mans all in a row. On the back, again, digital renders showing them in more neutral stances. Well, eh, not so much. Toby, mostly. The accessories that come with each. Again, warning, do not put them in your mouth. On the other side, there's your three Spider-Mans. Again, on top, Spider-Man logo. On bottom, legalese, barcode. We're opening it. But start off with Tom because I am pretty sure that this is complete reuse of a previous figure. It was this exact suit from the No Way Home Armadillo Build-A-Figure wave. But that Spidey didn't come with an armadillo piece, so I passed on it. And honestly, I haven't even built armadillo yet. So this is my first hands-on with this version of Spider-Man, this figure in this costume, and oh, I really, really like it. It's just a great looking sculpt. There is a lot of nice texture that catches your eye, but doesn't catch your eye because of how subtle it is. Like you know there's something going on there. The reds have that basketball thing going on. Same with the blues. But then the contrast of the smooth gold running across the chest and the shoulders and down around the waist and the wrists. I nearly called them ankles because I'm a dumbass. And then some slight touches of gold around the top of the boot just sets everything off. Looking at pictures of that first figure, because that's all I got is pictures, the blue parts on the figure I'm holding was black, or at least a really, really dark bluish, blackish, grayish color. Here, this is definitely blue. I don't remember if it changed in the movie or if that first figure was concept art or something, but I like this because it's, well, okay, black and red is Spider-Man-y, but so is this. The biggest difference on this figure from the first one, though, is the painted in web lines. It just sets it off. It makes it m even more Spider-Man-y. I mean, you take away all the color and you can still tell it's Spider-Man, but with the painted in lines, it adds that comic book flair to an MCU costume. And for the most part, the paint lines are clean. You can see them come off the lines here and there, especially since... The webs are sculpted in. And it's the same for the gold. Maybe a little bit of bleed here and there. And the back looks fantastic. Those red lines run on the torso and the arms and down below the belt. Okay, yeah, you can kind of see some bleed, but again, not bad. You get back away from it, put it on a shelf, out of the bright lights, big city, and yeah, it's perfectly acceptable. Oh, and there's another color poking through right there on the gauntlets. And speaking of those, those are not accurate to the final battle. And I pointed that out a few times on the weekly and everybody said that you can pop the hand off and take them off. But yeah, I was also warned about that. It's got a sculpted edge to keep it from turning on the arm. Let's see what it looks like if you plug the hand in and yeah, the wrist gets real small. And again, you get right up on it you can see the detail. That is noticeable. Or am I looking for it? Am I too focused on it at the moment? I guess I'll leave him on. Uh oh, which way does this go? Let's see. Oh, okay. I do have this Spider-Man. I think this is from Far From Home, but I like that the proportions seem to match between the two. But now that I have this out, yeah, the unpainted web lines, I think in the past it's always been, well, the shadows kind of hit it whenever you get it out of the light and stuff. But now that I have this, 
Yeah, this is so much better. I think I'm going to go back and try to panel on this one. That knocked down some of the plastic shine. But that's a play day for later. We're looking at this one. Oh, but I can't help myself. An earlier Spider-Man. You can see that Hasbro has improved on the overall shape, the silhouette. Because here's a big old head and the shoulders kind of droop down. And it looks okay, especially at the time when we opened it up. And it's like, oh, yay, Spider-Man. But this, far superior. This is a kick-ass upgrade. Going over articulation, there is a... What's that cut at the neck? It's formed right into the web lines. That's interesting and weird as hell. But it looks like there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball going into the head. Can look up, looks down. <gasps> Ooh, so much tilt. When you're swinging, always look left and right. Butterfly joint at the shoulder goes back, goes forward a little bit, but as you raise the arm, you can get a little bit across. Pin coming out to the shoulder, rotates all the way around with a hinge that comes up to 90. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up. Oh, all the way. Swivel at the the wrist with a hinge in and out. Hinge at the mid torso, crunches eh, about that far. Arcs way back. Swivel at the waist, breaks up the costume a little bit. But if we're getting technical, so does that, so does that, so does that, so does that. Ball coming out to the hip, comes up and back and out. Oh, not bad for a Spider-Man. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, comes, oh, kicks his own back. Oh wait, we can do it. We can do it. Bing! Hinge at the ankle goes back. Got some heavy detents to it. Forward and front facing pin for Rocker. For accessories, he's got two wall crawling hands, which I believe did not come with that first release. Awesome because Spider-Man needs wall crawling hands. You can pull those out like I showed a minute ago. Be careful with that. You get crazy and that could be gone. You can give them two fists and two thwips, but no grips, which is weird because it comes with, at this point, the tried and true Marvel Legends web line. This time, it's a translucent plastic. On one end, it has a pigtail, and on the other, a closed triangle, which I guess if you put the fist on and then slip the triangle over it, that works okay, but pose it better than I did. We Next up, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. This is the one I was looking forward to the least, but now that I have it out of the package, I like it a lot more than I thought I would. One, the promotional images made me think this was going to be proportioned weird. But going back and watching a couple of scenes, this is what Maguire looks like. He did have kind of a rectangle shape to him. And of course, this has some action figure features to it. The legs kind of spread out. They will not go together. But for me, it's mostly right here. And maybe the way I have it posed, you bring this forward a little bit. It kind of looks like he has a gut, but it's more the articulation trim but it doesn't have those superhero proportions it kicks out a little bit right here underneath the arms but not as much as young spider-man or well young toby anyway the legs are a little thicker the feet look like booties i've never noticed these kickouts here on the outside two the silver paint on the webs had me a bit nervous again looking at the promo shots it seemed like they started and stopped and even here you're looking at this and up here, it's shiny silver. And then, hey, did that even get painted? Yes, it did. It's the way the light reflects. If you turn it, then you see the actual paint. See out here, it disappears and then ba-boom. The biggie for me is on the head. The front, because I have a light right here, is reflecting back at us. But up here, it looks like it doesn't travel all the way over the head, but it does. The paint is there. You just have to get the light to hit it right. So covering my main light here, <laughs> it doesn't do it any favors. I think that is just a fact of life when it comes to this costume and the way they made it in plastic. Anything on the front and reflecting is prominent, and then as you travel around, other things appear. Up the back of the arms and across the top of the back, and down, and the belt. Nice deeper red to the back spider. I've never noticed that before. Hell, if you had told me that the spider looked like this, narrow at the bottom and then spreads out at the top, I would have called you a liar, but... I think that's accurate. Front spider spreads out more at the bottom. And again, I don't remember that, but I, I'm appreciating it more and more now that I'm getting up in the nitty gritty of it. You can see that the silver paint misses the sculpted web in places. So it kind of drifts and then gets heavy up there for some reason. But I think that ethereal kind of look, that shiny metal distracts from that once you get out of the macro lens. Like I always say, some distance helps. How you would see it in real life. Not against this with those lights 
and a camera just blasting right up into it. Oh, but now that I have it right here, this eye is painted right onto the sculpt. This eye is missing slightly. You can see the sculpted line right there where this is supposed to be there. And at first I thought, well, I'll just throw some black paint right there. But then that would make that edge too thick. It wouldn't match this side. I'd have to bring the white up a little bit. Oh, you can see the bottom too. I'd have to bring the black here and then maybe strip it off a little bit right there. For $90, it is kind of a big deal, but maybe I'll play with that later. And then three, the size had me worried. Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland isn't that much different in height. And again, from the promotional images, I thought, man, they have him towering over, but putting them side by side, which I'll get a better shot of in size and comparisons, they aren't that different. Sure, Maguire's shoulders come up a little further and he is slightly taller, but not near as much as I thought he was gonna be. Going over articulation, again, there's a dumbbell at the top of the neck and again with a cut across the bottom. That's oddball. Can look up, can look down. There's your beautiful tilt. Dr. Osborne? Dr. Octavius, Eddie! Butterfly joint at the shoulder goes back, goes forward. Pin at the shoulder, rotates all the way around and then hinges, oh, look at that. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, nice range. Swivel and hinge at the wrist. Torso changes up here. There is a floating upper torso with a hinge at the waist. So you get to here with the top and then crunches, oh, almost all the way. Arc, oh, look at that, no wonder you have back trouble. I'm looking for some of that tilt tilt and it can do that. Plus it rotates up there. There is a drop down hip that I found by accident. You can get up to here. Back, not a lot, out, not as good as Holland. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh, all the way. Who kicks Peter Two's ass? Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back and oh, very nice forward with some front facing pin for rocker. Same array of hands here, there's two fists. No problem pulling those out. There's two th whip and then two wall crawling that I really, really like because they're very Maguire centric, especially that one. It's almost kind of creepy. This one's cool, but it looks kind of weird. Like the fingers are too short or the palm goes up too far before it meets the fingers or the thumb is way too far down, something. But that one's awesome. Again, Spider-Man needs wall crawling. And then the Spider-Man comes with the exact same web or this one could be Tom Holland's because spoiler alert, there's three of these, one for each Spider-Man. So we're gonna see it again here in a minute. Spider-Man. Spider-Man, oh, sorry, Toby. Yeah! And then I saved Andrew Garfield for last. Out of the three Spider-Mans here, this is my favorite costume. It has that 90s kind of darkness and proportions. Garfield just kind of looks like a McFarlane Spider-Man. He's got that lankiness while still being muscular and those tight webs all over the costume. You punch in close and it has that movie basketball texture to it. More prominent on the blues, more subtle on the reds. It's intentionally toned down slightly. It's just a neat little thing that I've never noticed before. But then it's not broken up by seams and extra detail. Not that I hate seams and extra detail, but again, this feels comic booky in its cleanness, yet complicatedness. Have the web lines on the boots nicely done. They travel down. This side kind of angles in. Well, okay, so does this one. So it matches, or well, it's mirror image of each other. It's messy right there for some reason. Almost like the costumes come out of the boot and kind of overhanging it. This side, no, that's not happening. But then the gloves, same web detail. <laughs> I'm gonna say that a lot. Hey, look, there's web detail up here on the top of the arms and the shoulders and the chest and the back and the head. Then the web shooters are sculpted on the inside. The red is painted on the double elbow centerpiece and it looks kind of odd, but that's the only place that's like that. The chest logo nicely done looking like the movie having the hind legs go all the way down to the abs and then a little bit on top same thing on the back and that's nicely painted too something i didn't check on the others oh yeah it's painted inside the butterfly joint and all the way around back too unfortunately like toby the left eye is missing the sculpt slightly the right eye doesn't look bad at all it's got that nice reflective lens the glossy black around it and the left side is just as clean it's just not in the exact spot it should be. But again, back here, you can still kind of see it. For $90, it probably should have been right on there. But unlike Tom Holland, the web lines are black and that just adds to the overall darkness. It just looks like he's kind of in shadow. Even the fingers have a McFarlane type 
angstiness? No, spideriness. How's that? Of course, with all these lines, it's going to miss in places like here on the shoulder, but the overall paint job, all these lines, they're all nice and clean for the most part. There's a nice symmetry to them. It's pleasing when you look at them. Everywhere you look. And now that I get up here, there's almost a metallic sheen to the red. Maybe it's plastic, but I don't know. You get right here and, well, what the hell? This one's got a separate neck too. Huh. We may talk about that here in a minute. Because first, going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Can look up, can look down. Almighty tilt. Peter one, Peter two. Butterfly joint goes back, forward, pin out to the arm, rotates all the way around with a hinge that goes, oh, it goes up too. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, most of the way up. Wrist swivel, wrist hinge. Torso, same setup as Maguire. There's a floating top piece with a hinge at the waist that goes to there and then that goes to there. Not as far actually, just as far back though, but it has the tilt and the swivel and some hula hoop. Have the drop down hip here too. I was looking for it this time. Comes up to here and then back and then out. Ooh, it may be a tie with Holland. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, easily. This is your great responsibility. Hinge at the ankle goes oh, all the way back, further than back. Forward, front facing pin for rocker. Hand situation in the package. He's got a right fist and a left. I, this is supposed to be the wall crawling hand, but it's kind of doing its own thing. Something like this. Then there's a more traditional right wall crawling hand with some weird webs on the inside and then a left fist. There's a pair of whips. And then like you already know, amazing Spider-Man. Oh, did I just lock those? <laughs> Let go. This one also gets his own clear McFarlane-esque web. Nobody knows who you are. The thwips seem to work a little better because it locks the triangle on there. Now I hate to speculate, but I gotta think with the necks being separate pieces, that at some point it was planned to have unmasked heads. Like if there were unmasked heads, maybe they were planning swappable neck joints to show skin down to that joint piece. Cause look, it's even following the web line. It's harder to see on Garfield because his webs are so tight. Holland's is like that though. You can see the but this is reuse. This is from an older figure. Did the first one do that? I know the rumors are saying that these are going to be re-released with the unmasked heads. Although, is there still going to be legal issues with Garfield? Or what we think are legal issues because Bandai took away the unmasked heads on their figure? I don't know. It's just kind of weird that they all have that cut in the same spot. Size-wise, getting them all standing straight up and down next to each other. Okay, I'm going to go back and say Maguire could have been just ever so slightly shorter. But it is shorter than Garfield and then Holland is shorter than both. So relative scale wise, I am super happy. McGuire stands just under six inches. Holland is at five and three quarter. And then Garfield is at about six and three sixteenths. Here they are with a couple of older Marvel Legends Holland Spider-Mans. And they look really good with the Marvel Legends Happy Hogan and MJ. They also look nice next to the Marvel Legends No Way Home J. Jonah Jameson and Doctor Strange. Here's a Metacom Mafex Sony Spider-Man and then a Bandai SH Figuart Spider-Man. I think it was Homecoming and Far From Home. And then for giggles, since I had them out, here is the new Guardian of the Galaxy 3 Star-Lord and a custom youth pastor Peter Parker I put together with a casting cave head. The neck is way taller on this Spider-Man than this Peter Parker body. But with a little Dremel work, I bet I can get that to fit on there. And I'd swap a Tom Holland head onto this body, but somehow I have missed every Marvel Legends release that has an unmasked head. I didn't get the Walmart. I didn't get that two pack with Iron Man. I didn't get the Ned and Peter two pack. So like this, I'm gonna have to come up with custom heads for these two. After messing around with them for a little longer, I decided I needed to fix the looking up movement. The neck came up to a straight cut and that limited the dumbbell. So what I did was Dremel out a little channel. It was easiest on Holland. Garfield and Maguire have thinner walls at the neck, so I took a little out, but I may go back, cut a little channel in the back or something. Because in most poses, it's hidden. Did fix up a little bit. Maguire can now get further. Same for Holland. He can crouch down a bit more while still looking forward. Okay, I went back cut a little notch following the web line pattern so the bar fits into that slot in the back. You can see it a little bit. Well, okay, where's neutral position? Right about there. And eh, that is not going to bug me at all because that gives me this. Same with Holland. Slight notch gets me looking most of the way up. Garfield's neck is longer and his head sits a little higher so you can see it right there. But again, 
I'd much rather have this because I'll have them in crouching poses, doing wall crawling things and stuff, doing whatever a spider can. At the end of the day, I still had to fake McGuire's pose here. Can you see it? It's the old pop the head off and just sit it on top of the ball in order to get up as high as you needed to go. Because his proportions are too human, the arms are too short to reach down for a four point stance, you can kind of do a three point, but like I said, even with the neck mods, I still had to fake it a little bit. But he definitely looks like Tobey Maguire in a suit, so I can't fault it too much. Yeah, they've made comic book Spider-Mans that can do deep crouches and all that, but they're usually gangly and the joints are open. Here, I think they wanted to keep the realism. Same goes for Tom, but they've been cultivating this figure for a few years now. They were in on the ground floor with Tom Holland Spider-Man. We saw the evolution. They started off weird, but then got progressively better, and now I almost say that this is one of the best Marvel Legends versions they've put out. But as I predicted, my favorite is Andrew Garfield. It's a nice mix of comic book and live action. And I know that that's what he looked like in the movies, which is me trying to say it's the nicest translation from comic to live action. And they've done a nice translation from there to plastic form. So <laughs> I really like this figure. And really what I'm trying to say is I like this set. Yeah, the price is high, $90. That's about 30 something for each figure, Spider-Man tax or something. Now I have my trio. I don't need the SH figure arts, which I would have been spending nearly $200 on after shipping and everything else. But even more than that, the big gripe, the lack of unmasked heads. We've speculated, don't know if it's legalities, likeness rights, what's going on. There are rumors, there's leak lists, we will see what's going on there. So there are negatives. And it's accentuated by the fact that it's been a year and a half since the movie. So there's been speculation and hopes and dreams and then they showed it and then it was a long time before it shipped and then nothing was changed. It, it kind of crushed hopes. But I now have these three Spider-Mans in the display. And while it's a little reuse, there's a lot of new going on. So again, I'm happy, but that's just me.